I sort of design what I do around the things that don't get covered by the traditional media because of what they cover. So for example, when they're covering a hearing, they want to come out with one and only one storyline. And these hearings are built such that the, the big showpiece of the hearing is the beginning of the hearing. And so if you're a journalist who doesn't necessarily want to spend eight hours listening to throw in Congress people, what you're going to do is you're going to listen to that big name witness who's first. You're going to chase that witness out of the room afterwards and hope to get him or her on the record. And then you're going to help go home and you're going to, you're going to go to the media room on the hill and write your story. Um, I, an example of this is when Valerie Plain testified on the hill. I don't blame anyone in their right mind for chasing Valerie out of the room and trying to get her on the record. But everybody knew what she was going to say. It was beautiful, it made great copy, great pictures. One of the most interesting things in that committee hearing was a guy by the name of Bill Leonard, who's the guy who had that long battle with Dick Cheney over whether OVP had to follow the rules of classification that normal human beings do. And he said some very interesting things. And based on my actually being one of the few people who stayed to the end of that hearing, hearing what he had to say, we ended up having some conversations going forward, which allowed me to um, move forward the story of not only the fight that Bill Leonard was having with Dick Cheney, but the Valerie Plain story, because they were connected. So the first thing is, you're not on deadline. So do yourself a favor and stay to the end of the hearing, because some of the most interesting stuff happens at the end of the hearing. And, and uh, traditional media reporters will also leave by five, not before, again, because they're deadline, but also because they're day job people. And so you know, I can be in the kitchen cooking dinner, ignoring death sessions. Um, well, the rest of the traditional media has left, and then Senator Whitehouse is going to come in and say something really interesting. Um, so that's one thing I would do. The second one is, and this is obviously the core of what I do, but read the document. I had a great laugh with um, a, a, a media person in D.C., not on the Hill, when I was there recently, um, because she had, you know, when, when you get these document dumps, the press person on that committee or in that in that agency becomes the most powerful person because they get to, because nobody actually reads the documents. So they say, tell me what's in it. And they take the press report and that means that the press person has gotten to choose exactly what to highlight. And the press person doesn't necessarily know what's in the document because they haven't necessarily read it. They don't necessarily know the issue as well as you do. Um, and, and, and again, if you read the document, you, you don't necessarily need to be first, although what what's, what's a good, approach to do, which we do all the time, is to throw up a link and say, tell me what you find, right? Thanks to my readers, because they're all brilliant. Um, but also, over time, to just persist through to make sure you read to the end, because again, all the best stuff happens at the end. Some documents to look for, which people don't tend to go back and look at, are one, QFRs, which are questions for the record. Um, you know, when you watch hearings and Eric Holder says, well, let me get back to you with those numbers. Let me get back to you with the answer of whether or not we're going to close this detention facility. Let me get back to you. They, are, they do. They are required to do so, although under the Bush administration took decades to actually get back to them. But some months after the hearing is over, there will be a PDF file of the questions for the record. And oftentimes, because the, the nature of hearings um, they're not meant to be substantive. The QFRs can often be substantive, so it's, it's worthwhile to nag the committee to get the QFRs because they're very informative. Another thing that's very informative that the press tends to overlook is um, the administration response to a potential bill. By one of the most informative documents about the nature of the wide, the, the massive surveillance program that was the, the outlines of it that went forward after the FISA Amendments Act was uh, a letter that Michael Mukasey and Mike McConnell wrote in response to Russ Feingold's very good proposed legislation that all went down in flames. Um, because they're, what they would say in the, in the conference room as well, you know, we don't want to minimize because blah, blah, blah. In the letter, they, they laid out why they didn't want to minimize, in other words, why they didn't want to protect American citizen data um, in more interesting ways that came as close as you could get to them saying, well, we frankly can't minimize because we can't identify the information that we collected using this, using this, using this material. The press is only interested in these documents for the veto threat. 
you know, they're going to say, oh, Obama issued a veto threat on this intelligence reform legislation. But they're not interested in what it says. You know, um, on the intelligence reform legislation, for example, it's notable that Obama said, um, we don't want GAO reform. And then DOD turned around and said, OK, we'll do GAO reform so long as we get to decide what it is and so as long as we get to you know, maintain a, a need to know on, that, on the document. Those little, those little uh, details are, are really get to the core of what's actually going on. Um, so um, as you think about what kind of stories you're telling, remember that there are stories that break news. And there, there are stories that you can use to kind of push progressive mobilization. And make sure you're telling both of those.